When it comes to designing rooms, there's a certain strategy I like to follow that seems to be the most successful after years of trial and error. It's the same process for every room, and I find that the more I repeat it, the more easily and naturally it comes. Today I'm going to talk about the important first steps I take when designing a space, and it all starts with the surfaces. Our next project in the Riverside Retreat was a guest bedroom, and we started out with a blank canvas. Since we're renovating this house to use as a vacation rental, we decided to give this small bedroom a more youthful makeover with twin beds, bold colors, and patterns. We recently removed all of the tile floors throughout the house and had new pergo laminate installed in a neutral tone that would work with any room design. Now before I buy anything for a room, I always make sure to have a design plan in place first. This is probably the most important step because everything you choose needs to work together. The colors, patterns, materials, and scale of the objects. So my best advice is to plan it all out in advance. All of my designs start with a single source of inspiration. This can be anything from a piece of furniture to a specific color or pattern, a light fixture, anything that grabs my attention, and then I design the room around that. With this room, my source of inspiration was this tropical wallpaper I found at Lowe's, made by Brewster Home. Since we're in Florida near the water, the theme of this house will have a tropical, jungle, nature vibe, so palm leaves and saturated colors were a perfect fit. And with kid spaces, you can always go more bold and playful with the design, so I decided to give this room a rainforest theme. Once I had my inspiration piece, it was time to figure out how to use it. Since this is such a bold pattern, I decided to use it on just one wall as an accent, so it wouldn't feel overwhelming. The focal wall of any bedroom is where the headboards will go, so it made the most sense to direct the attention there. Before installing our wallpaper, we decided to add two wall sconces. Our electrician mounted a receptacle to be centered over each bed and ran them to their own switch. It's always best to have these things done beforehand if you can help it, to avoid having to make repairs or retouch your finish work. With our electrician's job done, it was time to start thinking about wall color. One of my favorite design tips to make spaces feel cohesive is to pull a color directly from a pattern in the room. I wanted the wallpaper to stand out but still blend in with the rest of the walls. So I selected a handful of paint swatches from Sherwin-Williams HGTV Home line that matched to a color in the wallpaper. I couldn't decide if I wanted to go with blue or green, so testing out different swatches was the only way to find out. After looking at the walls and seeing how the colors changed over the course of a day, I found my winner, Sherwin-Williams Rice Terrace. Paint is always the easiest and cheapest way to update a room. It's instant gratification, and a high quality paint like this will cover in just one coat. We used an eggshell finish on the walls, which is ideal for high traffic areas because it's stain resistant and can be scrubbed clean. There's one major surface that's often forgotten in rooms, and that's the ceiling. I like to think of it as a fifth wall, and I always try to incorporate it into the design. Since this room is small and already has a bold color and pattern on the walls, I decided it'd be best to keep it white to draw your eyes up and make the room feel visually lighter. When it comes to ceiling paint, a flat or matte finish is recommended. Sherwin-Williams actually has paint designed specifically for ceilings, which I love because it takes the guesswork out of trying to pick the right color and sheen. It's a spatter-resistant formula that works with both smooth or textured ceilings, it blocks stains, and it leaves you with a matte finish to help conceal heavy texture and flaws. With the surfaces painted, we got to work installing our wallpaper. We've used this brand of wallpaper before, and it went up nice and easy, especially since we'd be covering the top and bottom and didn't have to worry about making perfect cuts there. With the walls, floor, and ceiling addressed, it was time for my favorite part, adding architectural detail. I think of trim and molding as a necessary design element to make any room feel polished and complete. It's like dotting your I's and crossing your T's. A simple way to do this is with crown molding and baseboard, both of which are great beginner DIY projects. We already had our new baseboard, but the room was in desperate need of crown molding. Nowadays, there's so many affordable options for different sizes and styles, so it can be the perfect way to bring in an unexpected detail. 
This one from Ikenna Millwork caught my eye on Lowe's, and it kind of reminded me of a tropical plant, so of course I had to have it. Don't forget to paint your molding before cutting and installing it, so that you don't have to go back and cut a straight line along your ceiling. We painted all of the trim in pure white by HGTV Home by Sherwin-Williams in an eggshell finish. This is the same lightweight polyurethane molding in our living room, which is easy to cut and secure to all types of surfaces, even our old plaster walls. We tried out the Craig Crown Cutting Guide this time, which included an angle finder to give us accurate inside and outside corner cuts. The nail holes and seams were filled, sanded, and touched up, and it made such a difference. Never underestimate the power of molding. Our final step for this phase one of our room design was to update the light fixture. As much as I'd love to have a chandelier, here in Florida, sometimes you just need a fan. Our guests will appreciate the comfort, but I also figured I'd make it a design feature. So in keeping with the tropical vibe, I found this fun palm leaf style at Lowe's. It gives the space almost a resort type feel, and it ties in with the wood floors and helps set the tone of the room. I'll be incorporating more of these elements into the design through furniture and accessories, and that's all coming up in phase two. I hope this video was helpful and gave you some insight on what goes into the planning and initial stages of designing a room. You can get links to all the sources used and more details in the blog post linked below. Stay tuned to see the full design come together in the big reveal, which will be coming up soon.